Vladimir Putin destabilizing the East, Middle Eastern and Asian conflicts spurring new migration into Europe, and Donald Trump questioning U.S. commitment to NATO, Germany has good reason to feel insecure. <music> Chancellor Merkel told Germans in May that we must fight for our future ourselves as Europeans. German troops have been deployed in locations ranging from Lithuania to Afghanistan and Mali. And Merkel has promised to raise German defense spending. But Germany and its chancellor face a fundamental problem. Most Germans are very reluctant to go down this road. They regard their own army with suspicion, an attitude reinforced by a recent scandal involving the Bundeswehr. Foreign deployments are tightly restricted by German law and parliament. Above all, attitudes are shaped by the shadow of history. After World War II, many didn't want Germany to have any armed forces at all. So successful have outsiders been in demilitarizing Germany, so sensitive are Germans about their warlike past, that today's greatest European power is likely to remain a battlefield weakling. After World War II, there was much debate about whether Germany should have any armed forces. An end had to be made, it was argued, to a cycle which began with Prussian militarism and ended in Nazi war crimes. While communist-ruled East Germany did create a people's army following German military traditions, in democratic West Germany, occupied by Britain, France and the US, a very different armed services emerged. The Bundeswehr, born in the mid-1950s, was a deliberately modest force, meant only to defend West German territory, not fight abroad. Its recruits were taught to think of themselves as citizens in uniform. Indeed the uniform itself, says historian James Sheehan, really does resemble that of bus drivers rather than the old guards regiments. Modern Germany, says Sheehan, thinks of its military very much the way most states think of their police force. What he calls a persistent distrust of military institutions, he adds, continues to be strong, and in some ways has become stronger. Underlying all this is the enduring memory of the horrors of World War II, not only the shame of Nazi crimes but also the devastation inflicted on civilians. For a long time, says military expert Sophia Besch from the Center for European Reform, if you were a soldier in Germany you could not really ride a train in your uniform. You'd be approached by passengers calling you a murderer. When the Cold War ended and Germany reunified, its people believed peace was now more or less permanent. But Christian Democrat politician and former defense minister Franz Joseph Jung says reality is very different and Germany has to build up its military. Since reunification Germany has begun to deploy troops abroad for the first time. But the sensitivities are acute. In 2009 there were allegations of a cover-up following a military strike in Afghanistan involving German forces that caused civilian deaths. Dr. Jung was forced to resign as a minister. <music> Meanwhile the old idea of a citizen's army has struggled to survive. Germany has abolished conscription and is concentrating, like other modern armies, on smaller specialist forces. Parliamentary oversight of military deployments is also very tight. In the ISIS war, for example, Germany is only allowed to send tornado planes that cannot shoot but only for reconnaissance missions. Debate arose that there were parties to consider acquiring its own nuclear weapons. But such ideas remain, he believes, more or less unthinkable and unsayable for most Germans. While some are opposed to nuclear weapons in principle, many others spent decades living comfortably under the US and NATO nuclear shield. No one suspected that Germany now had to seriously build a military, including nuclear weapons, he says. And few in Germany want to now.
Germany currently spends only around 1.2% of GDP on defense. We have a massive trade deficit with Germany, plus they pay a fair LESS than they should on NATO and military, Trump calls this bad for America and must change. Germany will resist Trump's calls for huge extra spending, but underfunding has been at times highly embarrassing, such as the revelation that during a NATO exercise in 2014 Bundeswehr tank commanders covered up their lack of machine guns by using broomsticks painted black, even in some practice they did not have ammunition so they had to use their mouths to imitate the sound of a rifle. Angela Merkel wants a strong German army able to take international responsibility. But her difficulty is that the German people are against the army. Perhaps the Germans will continue a unique historical experiment, trying to become a growing international power without significant military effort. For the past still weighs heavily. Whatever happens, there will be no brash marching into action abroad. Instead, Germany's military will tiptoe warily into a highly uncertain future.